Open Refine is a cleaning tool. It used to be called Google Refine, and you will occasionally find references to it as that on the web. Um, there is a book called Using Open Refine, which I've used and I recommend, and it's available as an ebook. But there's nothing like seeing it in action to appreciate what it can do. It's not like installing a normal Windows thing where there's lots of installation going on. You just go for the exe file, and that then becomes, uh, when you turn it into something on your taskbar, it becomes a picture of a diamond like that. And all the imagery they want around OpenRefine is polishing your data. Okay? So I've chosen some data that's fairly dirty, because we can do something with it. When you click on it for the first, well, every time you open it, it goes through this command prompt thing, and you don't, there's nothing you can really do, and it, takes, it says it's taking milliseconds, but it sometimes takes longer. But what it will do is it will open a new window in your default browser, sorry, a new tab in your default browser. So although you'll see I have got Chrome open, and that's my default, in a moment it will add, when I get to it, when it's finished doing this, it will add a new tab. And there it is. And it uses local host, so it's 127.001.3333. So that's local host. Although you're using a browser, you are not um, using the internet. You're just using a browser as an interface. Okay? So if you're on a train or a plane or anything, you can use OpenRefine. And equally, if you're doing a sensitive investigation, your data is not leaving your computer. It's not going on the net. You're just using Chrome or whichever as um, a way of talking to it. bit.ly, CIJXL, and you want spending 2015 CSV. First of all, it deals in projects. It deals in things that you're working on, polishing up particular bits of data. Um, so of course you have to create a project. And one of the amazing things about Refine, which I still find mind-boggling, is that um, although the data set I'm going to open is sitting on my hard drive, when I open it with o Open Refine, it's looking at it without apparently opening it. The date last accessed will not change. The edits will not be made to that file. The f everything that happens, happens within Open Refine. All so I haven't changed anything in the original file, which I find quite helpful sometimes. If I want to go back to Excel or whatever at the end, I'll have to export my project, as it's called, um, back to my hard drive perhaps with another name. I usually put the name refined on the end to say that, OK, I've worked on it, and now it's refined. Okay? But it's really important that when you next go back to your, the original file, it will look exactly the same, because you've done nothing to that file. So I'm going to choose the usual thing of choose files. And I'm going to Dropbox um, data. And then you say next. Now, it does a pretty good guess at what you're getting. It's got various options. It can do line-based text files, JSON files, RDF, XML, open document, and various others. But it usually guesses right. And it looks a bit like a spreadsheet. And this is a preview. And you can check through what you've got here. It's saying, ignore the first, well, you can choose. Do you want to ignore any lines? No. So the past, the next one is a column header. Yes. Uh, you can look down here. Quotation marks, to con it doesn't matter. You can have a look at all that. It's guessed that it's a CSV file correctly. So that's everything, and it's pretty correct. The only thing is the pound signs it doesn't like. It's changed them into something weird, but we don't need to worry about that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create the project. So that was a preview, and I create the project. And I've chosen one that's reasonably small, because that memory usage thing, I have over, overused it a couple of times with very big files. It's worth knowing that if you've been already working on a spreadsheet, and you've got several sheets, let's say, you've done some pivoting, you've done all sorts of things, it's going to try and look at all of them, and you've got to specify which one. And that will take ages. So if you really just want to polish one sheet, then save that sheet as a separate file and open that with, it, with Refine, because otherwise you just waste time. So here is everything that's in the original spreadsheet. And what's 
most important, I think, about what they call faceting. It's, it's faceting and filters. You've got screencasts, by the way. It, it comes with some quite... If you look up Open Refine on YouTube, there are lots of films telling you what to do. Um, but I'm going to show you the main usages of it. Uh, one of them is tidying up names. Now, you might not think that the data that I've got here is particularly dirty. It's a list of things like party names, uh, reporting periods, uh, whether it's a political party or not. And all this is a bit like a spreadsheet with some um, drop-downs at the top. But I'm going to look in the regulated entity, which is the party name. I click on the down arrow and I choose facet. And then I go text facet. Facet means polish, basically. You've got a facet of a jewel and you're polishing it, high-speed polishing. So it's now looking down that specific um, column. It's already analysed. It said, well, there are 277 different types of entry in there. They're sorted by name, although I could click count and it would switch to the one that's the most popular, you know, that crops up the most often. At the moment, I just want the names, and there they all are. Now, it's also got this very helpful button, which is probably the main thing it does for us, is cluster. And I'm going to have to walk you through that, and we'll do this more than once, so don't worry if you don't keep up. So I click on cut cluster, and what it's looking for is things which are quite close but not actually recorded the same. So this is a great set. So hope not hate limited, and hope not hate limited with a lowercase n on the not, of course a computer sees that as two different categories. There are 136 hope not hates with a capital N and 47 with a lowercase n. So which one do we want? Well actually, I'm going to switch to, I'm going to merge, it says, do you want to merge those? And I say yes. I don't like the grammar of having a capital N, so I'm changing that. GMB, the, the union, and G.M.B. Well, I'm going to have those unified as GMB. Then you've got unison colon, the public service union, and unison hyphen, the public service union. Are you sure they're the same thing? Well, yes. So I have the, I'll have the colon. Unite the union with a capital T or with a lowercase t. I'm going to have the lowercase t. And labor no to AV shows how old that was. Um, I'm going to have the one with the lowercase t. So I change that. And I merge selected and recluster. So what it's done is you've seen the sort of differences it's spotting. Okay, so now it's confirmed there are no clusters with that. It's got uh, four different ways, and you can Google these. I can never remember what they are. It's to do with typos, basically. Fingers getting tangled. Engram meaning sounding the same. Metaphone meaning another way of sounding the same. And Cologne phonetic meaning foreign and sounding the same. Now, some of those we might not expect to find. So we've done fingerprint. We're now going to do Engram. So it's found quite correctly, UK Independence Party and UK Independence Party brackets UKIP. Well, we're going to have UKIP. So it's just done 93 out of just, uh, just over 1,600 rows had UKIP in brackets with UK space I dot P dot. And I want UK IP. So I've merged those. And then I go round again, metaphone. And there's these things. Now, some of these get a bit, you need real knowledge, proper journalism, bit of research, because some of these, there are type, differences of typing in here. British National Party, British National Party deregistered, British National Party deregistered a different date. I'm not sure. I mean, for the purposes of this, I will choose one. But I would actually need to know a bit more about the BNP. I'd probably just leave that, in fact, um, unchanged. Can't do any harm. Independent Kidderminster Hospital and Health, independent green voice. Well, that's obviously different. It's now just stabbing away and saying, oh, it's got the word independent. Is that the same thing? No. United Kingdom Unionist Party and United Kingdom First, those are different. So it's already, these, these metaphones are not necessarily, they just begin with the United Kingdom. Christian Party, Christian Party, ah, that one's a deregistered, two different dates. I'll keep them separate. Usdor. And Usdor, that's just using an ampersand. And that one, so I'm going to merge those two. 
Scottish Unionist. You get the idea. You go through and you have a look and you see what, which ones you like and don't like. So, um, this is a project which is being saved as a project. In other words, a set of editing decisions. If you come rushing and say, oh, you've done all that wrong, I could, instead to undo it, I can just go back to number one and click on it, and it'll be back as if I hadn't done numbers two and three. So all that work I've just done, if you want me to undo all of it, I can. So it's telling me what it's done. It's kept a record. I've edited 269 cells. I've edited another 1674 and another 37. But if I go, I don't like any of that, tomorrow I can come back to this project and undo it at any time and go back one, two, three steps, whatever I need to do. So um, those, that's the main way of using it for names. We could do the same for practice with the supplier name. Facet, and partly because I need to do it again for you. Facet, text facet. There are... Right, so now I'm going to fill in the supplier name down here. There's quite a lot more. And it takes a while, even on a decent laptop, to do this. I don't know what it's doing. That worries some people that OpenRefine does stuff under the bonnet and you're not quite sure what's going on. So there are 5,813 choices, i.e. Um, the most uh, um, the different names of <coughs> companies that received money from political parties for services. So if we cluster those, this might be... Look at that. You see post office in... That one's... The second one there is probably just a space different. Post office with one space and one with two spaces. So I'm going to select some of these. I'm going to make my post office uppercase, Royal Mail, British Telecoms. You see it's got PLC, lowercase, P capital, uh, with a dot after it, P, P, P capital without a dot. Um, Facebook Ireland, Limited, various ways of doing that, and so on and so on and so on. The other really powerful thing I'm going to do, one of the... I, normally I would have spent a lot of time cleaning this column of names up. But, uh, obviously, it's only an exercise and it's not going to kill me if I get it wrong. And nobody's going to kill me if I get it wrong. So I want to show you something fairly extraordinary that it does. I'm not going to be able to do it um, all because it ta actually takes so long to do that it will be here till Christmas. But, well, no, no, we actually won't. It'll be about 15 to 20 minutes, but I'll be just standing here talking while, it goes, while the percentage goes up. And that is... You, uh, who's heard of opencorporates.com? Right. Open Corporates, which is, um, was a startup uh, funded by the Open Data Institute for a while and is now going in its own right, it pulls in, I better show it to you, um, Open Corporates uh, pulls in company data from all over the world, all jurisdictions. So, for example, we could look at, uh, let's say, Starbucks. It's a fairly obvious one. So go look at Starbucks, all jurisdictions, and anything with the word Starbucks in the title is listed. Okay? And you can see down here, you've got the ju various jurisdictions that these are registered in. You've also got useful things like account statements, company addresses. Uh, in this case, it's not there, well, sometimes you get health and safety gazettes, meaning they've been fi a company's been fined for a health and safety breach, which is very good if you're doing that kind of work, looking at companies that treat people badly. Um, I'm going to digress for a few minutes into open corporates because it's quite useful, and it's then going to make sense when I do it with uh, Open Refine. So we could look at the 44 registered Starbucks in the United Kingdom. So I've filtered it now. And these are various things controlled by Starbucks. Uh, if they're greyed out, then they're no longer active. The, the dark ones are, gray, uh, are active. Okay? So that's what Open Corporates is. It pulls it in from the company's house websites in the various jurisdictions around the world and puts it all into one place. It's a great resource if you want to investigate companies because if you click on an individual company, let's pick that one because it's near the top, you can see the name. It'll come up in a moment. You can see uh, it's a registered address and the directors. So there's somebody called Stephen Evans who's been a director since uh, September last year. Click on his name 
and it'll show me all the other things that A. Stephen Evans, not necessarily the same one, but mostly, is also a director of. So if you're looking at people who have serial dissolutions of companies, serial bankruptcies, all that sort of thing, it's a great way of tracking through all the companies they've ever run. It's very helpful. Okay, so the reason I'm showing you op open corporates is when I go back to open refine, so many open words in this talk, um, think, wouldn't it be nice to look at the suppliers and say, I'd quite like to link them in my spreadsheet to open corporates. If they've, got, if they've got a reference in open corporates, wouldn't it be nice to know that? Well, you can. And it's a little bit complicated. I'll go very slowly here. Click on the supplier name, and you've got reconcile down here. That means reconcile two sets of records. And although it sounds a bit premature, it says start reconciling. Well, if I click on that, it's got various things in here that you can reconcile with. And there's the Open Corporates Reconciliation Service. If I click on it, you'll see what you have to do is you have to Google or go to Open Corporates website and find out the address, what they call the endpoint for that um, service. So it, I put site opencorporates.com and then the word reconcile, and it gives you the instructions here. And it says, it allows open refined users to match company names to legal corporate entities. The endpoint is opencorporates.com forward slash reconcile, and you have to use the HTTPS colon slash slash. Okay? So back to supplier name, reconcile, start reconciling, open corporates reconciliation service, which I've already put in there. Um, do I want to include any of that? Uh, I want the uh, this uh, that might be useful. The full address, and then I say re start reconciling, and it'll do that for a while. As you can imagine, it's a fairly slow connection. Everybody's using it. So it's actually on the internet, and it's going to open corporates, and it's saying, does this name, is this name in your list? Yes or no? And gradually, it's bringing them in. And by the end, all these supplier names will become, if they are there, they will become hyperlinks. If there's any doubt, like there's two or three companies with the same sort of name, they'll all be there, and you can choose the one you think is the closest. I just want to show you one that's worked. So I actually created an extra um, column called Reconciled Company, and there they all are, sitting there. So, uh, and although it's, it's only showing me the top 25, 50 rows, it will do the whole thing. It just shows me a sample of a certain number of rows, just so you don't get gummed up on your screen with too much information. So it's showing you what you might get. And if there's anything you're unhappy with, like if I wanted to undo that reconciliation, I can do that. Um, but I'm not going to, because it took me forever. So that's two things we've done. Faceting, basic clustering, and tidying up all those names. Mass edits very quickly. Then a mass edit to reconcile company names. And it will do other things. Um, the trouble is, I'll warn you if, you, if you buy the book using Open Refine, it's got a chapter at the end about reconciliation, all of which is out of date. Because I sat and I thought, right, today's the day I'm going to learn reconciliation. I spent all day trying the different endpoints that it recommended and trying the exercises, and all of them were failing. And I thought it was my Wi-Fi, I thought it was my computer. And then I did a bit of actual hunting around for those endpoints within a browser, and they'd all moved to somewhere else. They'd all been deprecated by whoever was running them. And you had to spend ages Googling them. Uh, and I got other things. Um, and I got things like named, ed but named entity recognition, which I was still playing with. Um, I don't know. What there are various extensions you can get um, within o Open Refine. Um, once you've done the basics, which we've sort of done here, and just tidying up masses of data, you can then you can do reconciling. Um, and there is an extension where it will behave like um, pivoting, or you can plot things with D3. That's just built in as a freebie, which I've never got to work, by the way but it does, in theory, work. There's creating RDF files, um, which I haven't yet managed to work. But there are all sorts of things, all the time. The thing is, OpenRefine, which used to be Google Refine, and then Google handed it to the open source community, 
um, and it has taken off in the last four years and is getting better and better and better. The very first open refine I ever, oh, Google refine I tried was really hard work and it took me a long time to work out what it was doing. Uh, the latest one is a lot easier um, and the, the films that they put on, the uh, stuff, if you put open refine into YouTube you'll get loads of possible videos to watch telling you how to do things. Any questions? If you, yeah. um, using the reconcile tool, if mm -hmm. you don't tick any of the boxes like full address or something, mm -hmm. does it just provide a link to... It does its best. Yeah, it will provide a link, but you, you haven't helped it by... Because it's talking about... It's asking you in order to help it be more certain, like 100% certain it's got the right one. You want, you want that. Um, and so sometimes if you've got more information, you can help help it uh, save time by not just copying absolutely every possible you know, we've got, look at this one, it's got Bank of Asia Limited, the Bank of Asia Limited Limited, Bank of Asia and Pacific you know, I'm going to have to work through all those if I had one with a particular address or something like that, it would have narrowed that down for me. In the book, I think one of the ones that still does work is uh, the example they give is the, is the Powerhouse Museum in Sydney, where they've created unique reference identifiers for every object in the museum. So in theory, let's say you've got a 20 denarii uh, Roman coin that's in the Ashmolean Museum and another three or four that's in the powerhouse in Sydney. Are they the same ones, you know, the same dimensions, the same era? They get, a, they get an identifier and then you can say, oh yes, there's one in this museum and this museum. So the, the internet of things in that sense of being able to say that is the same as that. That model of desk has a specific name from a specific su supplier. You might want to say, I want that model in my next office, so you need to identify what that is. So you might find it in an Argos catalogue or an Ikea catalogue, but imagine that everything in the world could be linked in that way with a unique identifier that says this is the same as that on a different continent. Well, that's what some people are trying to do and what some of the reconciliation is about. That's stuff that is not really about journalism, it's about using Open Refine for all sorts of things. The other thing that it's good at, and which I haven't used enough of, um, but I want to just refer to, is uh, regular expressions. Okay, you know what regular expressions are? Which is actually what a lot of find and replace is based on. Um, if you learn the language of regular expressions, you can find, say, you want a particular nine-digit string, but you now want it to have three digits, hyphen, three digits, hyphen, three digits. So you can do that sort of find and replace thing. Find me all, in this column, find me all the nine digits, and wherever they occur, put a, put a hyphen in between every third one. So you can do that kind of thing with, with regular expressions. Or you know that a name is going to go name, middle initial, uh, and, then an, and then surname. So you wanted to take out all the middle initials. So you can do that kind of thing with regular expressions, saying find me an unknown number, because you don't know if it's going to be Charles or Mohammed in terms of length, um, and then you want uh, the uh, space and an initial and a dot and a space. And you want to get rid of the space dot, space capital dot space. And you just tell it that that has to be turned into that using regular expressions. Well, re Open Refine will do all sorts of searching and replacing with regular expressions. There's customized facets, there's word facets, numeric log facets, text length facet, those sort of things. I've not to be honest, I haven't used any of those. Um, I've seen people use this one where you, it, it gives you a menu and you are using, you can either use GREL or you can use regular expressions by using the drop down. I'll just say the, the final thing is, of course, when I've done this one, I can come back to this. As you saw, I edited it eight months ago. It's been sitting there ready, for, ready to go and I can go back and it's got all these undos and it's kept a record of everything I did right up to then. Uh, but then when I want to go back to the real world of Excel, for me, real world, I go Excel, <coughs> export it, and I can do the usual thing of putting it somewhere in my Dropbox or whatever. And I will always put the name refined on the end so that I distinguish it from the original. Okay? So you sort of re-import it back into your hard drive uh, as a proper Excel file instead of a, um, what you have here. Which is a sort of virtual file. It doesn't really exist until you export it. You're just sitting looking at it within your browser, which is a bit weird. Keep 
I keep looking for the word, word open refine and reconcile in various places and seeing what's coming out. And you need, the other thing is Sparkle, S-P-A-R-Q-L, endpoints. And they're coming around. A lot of UK data stores have Sparkle endpoints. And that should work with aspects of open refine, and I haven't had time to learn that yet. So I'm only telling you it exists. So if any of you are better with Sparkle, go forth and Sparkleize. Any other questions? It's very hot in here, and it's the end of a long day. Uh, I know this is shorter than was uh, expected, but there is, in a, in a sense, all you can do is, is practice. I just wanted to get you started. <laughs>